Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we'll be checking out the Zhan Hao spot welder for lithium ion batteries. So this video I wasn't actually going to make but I used this and I was actually pretty impressed with it. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. This is something that I bought myself, recommended by Mark Hoffman. And yeah, I thought I'd do a quick video just to show you guys what it is and how well it works. There are a couple of little niggles with it, but other than that, it works great. All right, so you can see it's just like a basic cardboard box, no branding on it whatsoever. So, you know, sharing what it is is quite tricky but I will be putting a link in the video description. All I've really had to go on is this Zhan Hao technology on the manual. And the manual is not bad at all. Um, obviously there's a little bit of uh, translation, but it's easy enough to work out how this thing works. So what you get in the box is some nickel strips. You get a USB-C charger. So nice that it's USB-C. We get the actual module itself, which I'll show you in a sec, and we get the two uh, probes. Yeah, you know, they're really nice heavy duty wire. So uh, yeah, 10 American wire gauge. To be honest, this is really my only problem with it so far. I wish these wires were a little bit longer, but other than that, it works great. So yeah, let's have a quick look at the unit. So looking at it, you would think it's going to be cheap junk but actually it's pretty decent there's not really any markings on this to differentiate it so really it's just going to be the link that i put and then just making sure that it looks like this and then hoping for the best unfortunately even the qr code is not printed very well we have a usb c on the back so you plug it into a uh, usb port that can output two amps or more and that will get this charged up the first time I charged it, I did notice at the back here, it was getting pretty warm. Um, not overly warm, but still enough for me to want to open it up and take a look. And it was actually the lithium cells that were warm. Uh, I will open it up in a sec so we can have a look inside. I let it cool down for a bit, put it back on charge and it didn't heat up again. So I think it was just possibly where it had been in storage for some time. They had dropped below where they really were comfortable with the storage voltage. And once they were back up above that sort of storage charge, the charge was fine. It was absolutely cold to the touch, no issues whatsoever. So just the first time you charge this, be a little bit careful. Uh, speaking about storage charge, if you leave this for five days, it will automatically put the battery into a storage charge voltage, which is a great safety feature. But let's have a quick look inside. So I should be able to do this just removing one end. And I will need to be a little bit careful because this is uh, about a f two, yeah, three thirds charged at the moment. Um, if you saw the posts Mark put on the face, the INF Fix Wing group, he actually bought two, um, two of these spot welders. This was one, the other one looks completely different. So yeah, we can go. So there's the lithium cells. They were, as I said, a little bit warm to touch, but you can see there's absolutely no puffing on these whatsoever. I think it was just slightly overly discharged. You can see that this is connected by actually bolting to the plate. So one thing we'd recommend is just make sure that these bolts are nice and tight. Uh, get a little spanner on, just make sure that they're nipped up. Um, because if they're a little bit loose, then you could get arcing between them. But these came really quite nice and tight. And you can see that they've actually put metal onto the uh, the traces. So it's a really well thought out and nice design. We've got the obviously the charging circuit over this side. We've got the circuitry this side for actually operating the pulses. And then we've got the connection for the battery here. But yeah, so there's not a really a lot to see on the inside, but you can see it's actually really nicely built. So we'll slide that back in and then we'll go over the features. OK, so the basics of it are actually really simple to operate. You just hold the button down to turn it on and that's it. It's on. When it's on, you have the green indicators which show you the charge level. Obviously, four is fully charged and then it goes down to one, which is charge me. 
when you first turn this on, it will probably be in a different mode where it outputs a pulse every one and a half seconds. So to change that, you just press the button once. So you can see it's doing it now. Every one and a half seconds, it's putting a pulse out. If you just press it once, it now becomes in automatic mode. So you, once you put your probes down, there's about a second delay and then it will do the spark. If you double tap, you can adjust the power level. So I'm on power level three. And I found that that works really well. I'll demonstrate in a minute. I was using this strip here, which I believe 0.15 mil. Um, so you've got plenty of power in reserve. To change the power level, you just push the button once. Once you get to the level you want, you just double to press it. And that's it set. But as far as using it goes, there's really not much else to say. It's got an automatic power off after 10 minutes. And after five days, it will automatically go into storage charge. So this light on the back here will be orange. It's actually discharging. The fact that it's USB-C and the battery is inside it, I think is brilliant. Oh, yeah, to turn it off, you just hold the button down. Same as turning it on. I did buy one of those really dirt cheap, about 11 pounds uh, spot welders from Banggood. But then you need to find batteries to run them on. And to be honest, this is just much more compact, much more useful. To so say the only thing that I would prefer is slightly longer cables, but you can still work with it. So let's have a go at making a pack. So this is my Dart 250G, and I just need to stick some of these in. Oh, interesting, they would just about <laughs> squeeze in. So let's see. Oh, we can come forward a bit. Yeah, that's pretty nice there. So I should just be able to make a straight inline pack. So what I'll do is I'll get the hot hot glue gun out and what I'll do is I'll glue them in situ so we know that it's gonna fit. Obviously the, the little cover that's gonna go over it's not gonna really add too much okay so while i was waiting for the glue gun to heat up i thought i'd take the opportunity to prep some strips so i've put the balance uh wires on two of these strips already uh as you can see all i've done is run a thin bead of hot glue just to hold the batteries in place they will be wrapped in plastic afterwards so it's really just to make it easier for the welding all right so <clears throat> i'm going to keep these apart and then we're going to turn that on so long press let go it's not flashing it's remembered the mode we're in so it's in sort of contact automatic mode so this is going to be a little bit tricky uh, because i've got that wire on but once we've got the first weld on it will be fine so let me get that into position so this is why the longer leads would have been nice so let me hold that on there and I can use the pressure from that just to make sure that that is in position. And then let's go. So you can see we're just holding it down. And it's spotting on for us. So we've got, and sorry that went off camera, but you can see we've got a nice attachment there. So again, I'm just going to use one to hold it in position, then attach the other. And when it detects that uh, continuity is when it actually does a spark. Let's try with the light off, you might see it a bit better. There you go. Not the easiest thing to do on camera. <laughs> you can see we've got uh, quite a nice attachment on there. That is nice and strong, it's not going anywhere. Um, I will go and tidy the, some of these welds up. Some of them look a little bit shallow. Um, this side looks absolutely fine. And then uh, what we'll do is I'll get the other side on. We'll carry on with the battery. There we go. That is the other side done. Again, not perfect, but this is the second pack that I've used it on. But you can see it's on there solid. It's not coming off. Um, I've literally just finished this and it is cool to the touch. These do not heat up uh yeah don't worry it, about the gold there is actually a clear uh shrink over it up until the points 
so yeah it is covered you're not it's they get slightly warm but yeah nothing i'd even be concerned about but you can see it works pretty well okay so while i'm at this stage i thought i'd just share the wiring over with you guys so uh basically you obviously start at one end with an open cell you go through the cell you have your nickel strip to bridge the two cells it goes through that cell you have the nickel strip to bridge the two cells and it goes down and then finishes at this cell so it, on each bridge you will have a balance cable and on the end uh, of the pack you will have the main power feed and also a balance cable so this is obviously the negative end so i have the final negative balance lead and the uh, negative power lead and this is the positive end so i have the positive balance and the positive power lead so i've connected up all my balance leads at the moment so if you hold the balance clip uh, towards you with the two little prongs going up the prong on the right is the negative all the way to the other end is the positive no matter how many in series you're running so always the what the prong on the right is closest to the main negative so i started with this red lead with the prong on the left and then basically you follow the battery so it's starting here so it goes through to here so this one that's in between these two cells is the next one which plugs in there it goes through that battery this one that's in between these two cells plugs into the third one and then back through there the final one which is this longer lead goes into the the final negative lead and then obviously you can check each one with a multimeter or you can just plug it into a balance uh balance thing <laughs> battery checker that's the word i'm looking for so you can see here we've got 3.5 volts on each cell so it's not too far off but it will balance up with a, a charge so the final steps for this pack is to put the main power lead on so i'm basically running the main power lead to here that one along here and then the xt30 will be gone on the end there once that's done i'll be taping up the ends and then wrapping the whole thing in a uh, shrink just to finish the pack off now one word of warning obviously i i have been cutting these wires to length do not just go snip these are obviously connected to the battery so if you do that you will short it out just mark it with your finger make sure you're far away and then snip it um, basic safety but anyway i will get the final finishing touches to this done and then we can see the end result so there we have it my first pack that i've made with the spot welder um, i have spot welded another three cells together but i haven't actually finished the pack on that one yet uh, but this is the first one that i've actually completed and i'm pretty happy with it so yeah you can see the main power is working too i mean physically from the outside it's not going to look any different to my old packs this one i used uh solder but actually making the packs i did feel a lot sort of happier that i wasn't holding a soldering iron onto you know other than the two uh end cells which i did solder everything else was spot welded and was constantly cold to the touch uh, so i feel a lot more confident actually making these packs up but also using this thing is a lot quicker than soldering so if you have got a lot of packs to make up or um or making up a big pack this will save you time so this thing cost me about 39 pounds which when i had a quick look online for lithium ion packs uh 4s1p was around 30 to 35 pounds so you are spending a bit more money on buying that in the first place but it gives you a lot of advantages firstly some of these packs you don't actually know what cells you're getting they could you know say they get putting one cell in but they might not be genuine uh, especially ordering from certain places but it also gives you the freedom to choose the cells that you want for example you might want to make a pack using the uh, multi 21700s uh, for a specific plane or you could be building a monster pack which just simply doesn't exist to buy and if it did it would cost an absolute fortune you know, 
we're talking hundreds of pounds here. Whereas to buy the cells will probably cost you a lot less. So long term, I can't really uh, comment on it. I know that Mark has actually built a big, big battery using this and it's still as you know, no problems whatsoever. And me personally, I will be building the pack for my mini crosswind with it. And I'll also be making other packs for smaller planes too. I just think it's going to be a very useful tool. And for that sort of money, it's a no brainer for me. I'd be much happier building my own packs, knowing the cells that I've put in there are genuine and are actually the spec that I want for that particular plane. So I hope this video was useful for you guys. If it was, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Also clicking the subscribe and the bell icon will help get this video out to more people too. But also if you enjoy flying things like this, then there's probably gonna be something else on my channel that will pop up that will interest you. So thank you very much for watching guys and fly your models like you stole them. See you on the next one.